Hey everyone, I will be showing the recipe for my version of ube custard cake. Before we make the custard, I'm gonna make the caramel for the flan. So for this, you will need one and one fourth cup of granulated white sugar and one fourth cup water. Next is you prepare a wet pastry brush. Make sure to clean up the sides of the saucepan to prevent recrystallization of the sugar. Do this multiple times. During the cooking process, do not stir the mixture in the beginning stage of the caramel or else you will cause the mixture to crystallize. Cook caramel to a nice light brown color. Give this a light stir and this is almost ready to use. Pour this into two 8 inch round pans. Divide your caramel into two equal portions enough to cover the base of the pan. Set this aside and now let's prepare the flan. For this you will need 9 pieces of fresh egg yolks. One and a half cups of evaporated milk. And one can of condensed milk, which is about 300 ml. Give this a quick stir and next is we will strain the mixture. Strain the flan mixture into the baking pan. You will at least need around 2 cups of this in each of the baking pans you prepared. You have two options to cook the flan. You can either steam it or bake it using the bain-marie method. If you are baking your flan, make sure to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So before baking, we will need to cover the top of the baking pan with aluminum foil. You will also need to poke some holes on the foil so steam can escape during the baking process. You will need to steam or bake this for about 30 to 40 minutes or until set. Next is we will be making our ube chiffon cake. A chiffon cake is known for its light and billowy texture which provides a great complement to the flan filling. For this, we will be adding freshly steamed ube to the classic chiffon cake recipe. So for this, you will need the following. 2 thirds cup of grated ube. 7 pieces of egg yolks 2 thirds cup of fresh milk 
and half a cup of corn oil. Pulse all liquid ingredients in a food processor or a blender. Next is, you will add 2 teaspoons of ube flavoring. The amount of ube flavoring is actually very variable since the available ube extracts have different levels of concentration. You may also have to add violet food color to enhance the color of the cake. Transfer this mixture into a large bowl. And now let's prepare our dry ingredients. For this, you will need 2 and 1 fourth cups of cake flour sifted, 3 fourths cup of granulated white sugar, 2 teaspoons of baking powder, and 1 teaspoon of fine salt. Mix all these ingredients until well combined. Now gradually add the dry ingredients into the wet mixture. Mix this using a wire whisk until you create a smooth batter. Set this aside and now let's prepare our egg white mixture. And now let's prepare our meringue. In a clean bowl, we have 7 egg whites and 1 teaspoon cream of tartar. The role of cream of tartar provides a stability of the meringue which is very helpful in creating the volume we need for this cake. Making meringues can be tricky. Make sure that your utensils are free from any oil stains. You should also make sure that the egg whites does not have any traces of yolks. If any of these are contaminated with fat, you will not be able to achieve a very nice volume on the meringue. At this time, we will be adding 3 fourths cup of granulated white sugar. Notice that we are adding the granulated white sugar on the frothy stage. Beat the egg whites until medium stiff. Beating the egg whites until medium stiff provides a finer texture on my sponge cakes and chiffon cakes. An easy way to check the consistency of the meringue is to lift the whisk from the meringue. If the tip or peak points to the side, 
then that is medium stiff. It's now time to fold our meringue into our cake batter. I usually do this method using a wire whisk and a rubber scraper. Take out about one fourth of the meringue and fold it into the batter to lighten the mixture slightly so it would be easier to fold the rest of the meringue without deflating it. Towards the end of the folding technique, use a rubber scraper to make sure that the batter is well incorporated into the egg whites. We will be using 9 inch round pans about 2 inches high. We will divide the mixture into 3, pour this into pans lined with parchment paper and bake this in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes or until done. Next is we'll be preparing the frosting. First is we will need to beat 1 cup of cream cheese with half a cup of ube jam until fluffy. You can also add one and a half teaspoons of ube extract to enhance the flavor and color. Make sure to scrape the sides of the bowl to make sure that the cream cheese and ube are blended very well. Next is to add half a cup of granulated white sugar. Sugar in this recipe is actually variable depending on how sweet the ube jam is, so make sure to adjust the sugar to make sure that the frosting is not too sweet. You can also use powdered sugar for this, but the granulated sugar works just as fine.
At this time, we will change the attachment to whisk and add 1 and 1 fourth cup of heavy cream. If you are using a hand mixer, just continue to use the beaters of your hand mixer on this stage. Whisk until the mixture is thick. In humid places, you can stabilize this frosting by adding gelatin. So for that, you will need to bloom about 1 tablespoon of unflavored gelatin and 1 fourth cup of cold water for about 5 minutes. Melt the gelatin over low heat, cool it down, and add it to the frosting. Now our frosting is ready to use. Let's start the assembly of our ube custard cake. First is to place the cake on a cake board. Take some ube frosting and spread it evenly into the cake. Now the next step in the assembly of our cake is to insert our prepared flan. Notice that the flan is easy to handle. The secret is to take out the flan from the pan after steaming or baking, invert them on a tray and freeze it. This will make sure that the flan will not break when you transfer them during assembly. Now repeat the process until all layers are used. Using an angled spatula, ice the top and the sides of the cake with the ube frosting. For the pipe decorations on top, I am using whipped cream with powdered sugar. Now if you want to do the exact lattice and rosettes on top, you will need to use tip number 18 and 1M from Wilton.
This cake is almost ready. Chill the cake for about 2 hours before serving. So there you have it guys, ube custard cake. So if you have any questions or comments, please type them below. And do not forget to hit like and subscribe to Sweet Project at Home for more recipes. Thank you!